Hi, welcome back to theCUBE coverage of AWS reInvent 2021. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE. In this segment, we're going to be talking about Red Hat and the AWS Evolving Partnership. A great segment, really talking about how hybrid and the enterprise are evolving, certainly multi-cloud on the horizon, but a lot of benefits in the cloud we've been covering on theCUBE and on SiliconANGLE with Red Hat for the past year, very relevant. We got Gunnar Helixson, GM of Red Hat Enterprise Linux, and Joe Fernandez, VP of, and GM of the hybrid platforms, both of Red Hat. Gentlemen, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Yeah, thanks for having us. Thanks for having us, John. So, you know, you know me, I'm a fanboy of Red Hat. So I always say, you know, you guys made all the right investments, OpenShift, all these things that you guys made decisions years ago is play, playing out beautifully. And I think, you know, with Amazon's reInvent, you're seeing the themes all play out. Modern application stack, you're starting to see things at the top of the stack evolve and you got 5G in the edge workloads being redefined and expanded on the cloud with cloud scale. So everything has been going down to hybrid and enterprise grade level discussions. This is in the wheelhouse of Red Hat. So uh, Juan, congratulations, but what's your reaction? What do you guys see this year at reInvent? What's the top story? <laughs> I can start. Who wants to uh, jump in first? Yeah, Go sure. Ahead. I mean, I mean, clearly, you know, AWS itself is huge, but as you mentioned, the world is hybrid, right? So customers are running uh, uh, still in their data center in the Amazon public cloud across multiple public clouds and out to the edge and, and bringing more and more workloads, right? So it's not just the applications, it's analytics, it's AI, it's machine learning. And so, yeah, we just can, can expect to see uh, more discussion around that, more uh, great examples of customer use cases. And as you mentioned, Red Hat's been right in the middle of this for some time, John. Um, you guys also had some success with the, with the fully managed OpenShift service called ROSA, R-O-S-A, which is Red Hat OpenShift service on AWS, uh, another acronym. But really this is about the, what the customers are looking for. Can you take us through an update on OpenShift on AWS? Because the combination of managed services in the cloud, refactoring applications, but working on premises is a big deal. Take us through that, why that's so important. Yeah, so we've had customers running uh, OpenShift on AWS for a long time, right? So uh, whether it's our software-based uh, offerings where customers deploy OpenShift themselves, or you know our fully managed uh, cloud service, we've had cloud services on AWS for over five years. Uh, what Rosa brings, or Red Hat OpenShift on AWS, is a jointly managed service, right? So we're working in partnership with uh, with Amazon, with AWS. Uh, to uh, make o OpenShift available as a jointly managed uh, service offering. It's a native AWS service offering. You can get it right through the AWS console. You can leverage your uh, AWS committed spend. Uh, but most importantly, you know, it's something that we're working on together, bringing uh, new customers to the table for both Red Hat uh, and AWS. And uh, we're really excited about it because it's really helping customers accelerate uh, their move to the public cloud and, and really helping them uh, you know, drive that hybrid strategy that we talked about. Gunnar, you know what, I want to get your thoughts on this because one of the things that I love about this market right now is open source continues to be amazing, continues to drive more value. Um, and this new migration of talent coming in, the numbers are just continuing to, to grow and grow. Um, but the importance of Red Hat's history with AWS is pretty significant. I mean, Red Hat mm -hmm. pioneered open source uh, and has been involved with AWS from the early days. Can you take us through a little bit of the history for the folks that may not know Red Hat's partnership with AWS? Yeah, I mean, we've been collaborating with AWS since uh, 2008. So for over a decade, uh, we've been working together and what's made the partnership work is uh, that we have a common interest in making sure that uh, customers have a consistent, approachable experience, whether they're going on premise or in the cloud. Um, uh, nobody wants to have to go through an entire retraining and retooling exercise just to take advantage of all the great all the great advantages of, uh, of the cloud. And so being able to use something like Red Hat Enterprise Linux as a consistent uh, substrate on which you can build your application platforms uh, is really attractive. Um, so the, the, that's where the partnership started. Um, and since then we've had the ability to better integrate with the native AWS services. Um, and one thing I want to point out is that, you know, a, a lot of these, uh, a lot of these integrations are kind of technical, well, but these are also, uh, it's not just about technical consistency um, across these platforms, it's also about operational consistency and business concerns. And when you're moving into an open hybrid cloud kind of a situation, uh, that's what becomes important, right? You don't want to have two completely different tool sets on two completely different platforms. You want as much consistency as possible as you move from one to the other. Uh, and I think you, and I think a lot of customers see value in that, both for the Red Hat Enterprise Linux side of the business and also on the OpenShift side of the business. Well, that's interesting. I'd love to get your both perspective on this whole enterprise 
focus because you know the enterprises, as you know, uh, guys, you've been there from the beginning, they have requirements, you know, and there's sometimes they're different by enterprise. So as you see cloud, I mean, I remember the early days of Amazon, it's the 15th year of AWS, 10th year of reInvent as a conference. I mean, that seems like a lifetime ago, but that's not, not too far ago where, you know, there was like, well, Amazon might not make it. It's only for developers, enterprises do their own thing. Now it's like, it's all about the enterprise. How are enterprise customers evolving with you guys? Because they're all seeing the benefit of replatforming but as they refactor, how has Red Hat evolved with that, with that trend and how have you helped Amazon? Yeah, so as we mentioned, you know, enterprises you know, really across the globe are, are adopting a hybrid cloud strategy, but hybrid actually isn't just about the infrastructure. So certainly uh, the infrastructure where these enterprises are running this application is increasingly becoming hybrid as you move from data center to multiple public clouds and out to the edge but the enterprise's application portfolios are also hybrid, right? It's a hybrid mix of very traditional monolithic and tier type applications, but also new cloud native services that have either been built from scratch, or as you mentioned, you know, existing applications have been refactored. Um, and then they're moving beyond the applications, as I mentioned, to, to make better use of data. Also uh, evolving their processes, right? For how they, you know, build, deploy and manage, you know, leveraging CI, CD and GitOps and so forth. So really for us, it's, how do you help enterprises bring all that together, right? Uh, manage this hybrid infrastructure uh, that's supporting this, you know, hybrid portfolio of applications, and really help them evolve their processes. We've been, uh, you know, working with enterprises uh, on these types of challenges for a long time, and and we're, you know, now partnering with Amazon to do the same uh, in terms of our joint product and service offerings. Talk about the rail evolution. I mean, because. That's the bread and butter for Red Hat's been there for a long time, OpenShift again, making like earlier, I mentioned the bets you guys made uh, with Kubernetes for instance, and it's all been made all the right moves. So love Rosa, you got me sold on that. Rail though has been the, the, tr <laughs> the tried and true steady uh, workhorse. How has that evolved uh, with workloads? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. It's, uh, uh, I think when, when customers were at the stage when they were wondering if, uh, well, can I use AWS for, to, to solve my problem or, or should I use AWS to solve my problem? Our focus was largely on kind of technical enablement. Can we keep up with the pace of new hardware that Amazon is rolling up? You know, can we, can we ensure that consistency with the on-premise and off-premise? And I think now we're starting to shift focus into uh, really differentiating RHEL on the AWS platform. Again, integrating natively with AWS services, um, making it easier to operate in AWS. Um, and uh, a good example of this is uh, uh, using tools like uh, Red Hat Insights, uh, which we announced, I guess, about a year ago, um, which is now included in every Red Hat Enterprise Linux subscription, using tools like Insights in order to give customers advice on um, maybe potential problems that are coming up, helping uh, customers solve them, uh, helping customers identify problems before they, before they happen, uh, helping them with performance problems. Um, and, uh, Again, having uh, additional tools like that, additional cloud-based tools, um, makes RHEL uh, as easy to use on the on the cloud, despite all the complexity of all the you know redeploying, refactoring microservices. There's now a, a proliferation of infrastructure options, um, and to the extent that RHEL can be the thing that is consistent, solid, reliable, secure, uh, just as customers are customers are getting in, um, then uh, then we can make customers successful. You know, Joe, we talked about this last time we were chatting, I think Red Hat Summit or Ansible Fest, I forget which event it was, but we were talking about how modern application developers at the top of the stack just want to code. They want to write some code and now they want the infrastructure as code, AKA DevOps, DevSecOps. But as this trend of moving up the stack continues to be a big theme at reInvent, um, that requires automation, that requires a lot of stuff to happen under the covers. Um, Red Hat's at the center of all this action from, from historical perspective, pre-existing enterprises before cloud, now during cloud, and soon to be cloud scale. How do you see that evolving? Because how are customers sh uh, shaping their architecture? Because, I mean, this is distributed computing in the cloud. You got, it's, it's essentially, we've seen this movie before, but now at such a scale where data, security, these are all new elements. How do you, how do you talk about that? Yeah, well, well, first of all, as, as Gunnar mentioned, Linux is a given, right? Linux is going to be available in every environment, data center, public cloud edge, a Linux combined with Linux containers and Kubernetes, that's the abstraction, like separating, uh, abstracting the applications uh, away from the infrastructure. And now it's all about how do you build on top of that to bring that automation that you mentioned, right? So, you know, we're very focused on helping customers really build, you know, fully automated end-to-end -end deployment pipelines 
so they can build their applications more efficiently. They can automate the, the continuous integration and deployment of those applications into whatever cloud or edge footprint they choose. Um, and then they can promote across environments because again, it's not just about developing the applications, it's about moving them all the way through to production you know, where, you know, where their customers are relying on, you know, on those services to do their work and so forth. And so that's, that's what we're doing is, you know, obviously, uh, I think, you know, Linux is a given Linux containers, Kubernetes, you know, those decisions, you know, have been made. And now it's a matter of how can we put that together uh, with the automation that allows them to accelerate those deployments out to production so customers can take advantage of them. You know, Gunnar, we were always joking on theCUBE, you know, I was old enough to remember when we used to install Linux on a server uh, back in the day. You know, now the, a lot of these young developers never actually act to install the software and do some of those configurations because it's all automated now. Again, the commoditization and automation trend, abstraction layers, some say, uh, is a good thing. Um, so mm -hmm. how do you see the evolution of this DevOps movement with the partnership of AWS going forward? What types of uh, things are you working on with Amazon Web Services and what kind of offerings can customers look forward to? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, it used to be that, uh, as you say, you know, Linux was something that you managed with a mouse and a keyboard. And, uh, and I think it's been quite a few years since, uh, <laughs> since any significant amount of Linux has been managed with a mouse and a keyboard. A lot of it is, uh, what are yeah. scripts, automation tools, configuration management tools, things like this. And um, the investments we've made both in RHEL and then specifically uh, uh, RHEL on AWS is around enabling RHEL to be more manageable. Um, and so including things like uh, something we call system roles. So these are Ansible modules that kind of uh, automate routine systems administration tasks. Um, we've made investments in something called Image Builder. Um, and so this is a tool that allows customers to kind of compose the operating system that they need, create a blueprint for it, and then kind of stamp out uh, the same image, whether it's uh, uh, an ISO image, you know, so you can install it on premise or in or in AMI, so we can deploy it in AWS. So again, helping customers, it's the problem used to be helping customers package and manage dependencies and, and that kind of old world, uh, three and a half inch floppy disk kind of Linux problems. Um, and now we've evolved towards making uh, making Linux easier to deploy and manage at a, at a grand scale um, both uh, whether you're in AWS or whether you're on-premise. Joe, take us through the hybrid story. I know obviously success with OpenShift's uh, managed service on AWS. Uh, what's the update there for you? What, what are customers expecting this reInvent and what's the story for, uh, for you guys? Yeah, so you know, it, uh, the OpenShift managed services business, this is the fastest growing segment of our business. We're seeing uh, lots of new customers. And again, you know, bringing new customers, I think for both uh, Red Hat and, and AWS through this service. Um, so we expect to, to hear from uh, from customers uh, at reInvent about what they're doing. Uh, again, and not, not only with uh, with OpenShift and our uh, our Red Hat solutions, but really with, with what they're building on top of those uh, service offerings of those uh, solutions to, to sort of bring more value to their customers. So that, to me, that's always the best part uh, of reInvent is, is really hearing from customers and, and you know, when we all start going there in person again to actually be able to meet with them one-on-one, -on -one, uh, whether it's in person or virtual and so forth. So looking forward to that. Well, great to have you guys on theCUBE. Congratulations on all the success. The enterprise uh, continues to adopt more and more cloud, which benefits all the work you guys have done, both on the rail side and as you guys modernize with all these great services and managed services uh, continues to be at the center of all the action. Uh, thanks for coming on, appreciate it. Great. Thanks, John. Okay, Thank Red Hat's you. partnership with AWS evolving as cloud scale edge, all happening, all distributed computing, all happening at large scale. This is theCUBE with CUBE coverage of AWS reInvent 2021. I'm John Furrier, thanks for watching.